So for me, um, my personal mission is to strengthen the criminal justice system when it comes to sexual violence, child abuse, and um, intimate partner violence because I believe that's um, where it all begins at the family level and at the, each individual. And so because I have dealt with thousands of cases of child sexual abuse and, and rape cases where I deal with the victim, the suspect, then I go to court for those cases. So I deal with the prosecutors, the magistrates, the judges, the children's officers, the families, where there are deceased persons, you're still dealing with the families and other stakeholders. And this is on a daily basis. And um, one of the things that became very clear is that there are gaps across very many sectors, beginning at community level, um, which is now where all the stigma is and um, hiding adverse uh, dispute resolution mechanisms are, are at play. Um, there's a lot of shame and lack of information. Where do I go? What do I do? What should I not do? And um, of, I've noticed of late that there's, in, there's a bit of improvement when it comes to the immediate response for like a rape victim for example you do get some who will up, uh, attend to a hospital without having showered you know they've done everything correct they collected their clothes or they didn't shower you know took pictures it's amazing some of them really do know what to do but then it gets to the police station or the medical level and things fall apart but for a case to be well handled all the way to the court is one in probably like 10 million. There's gaps at every single level. And even as an expert witness in court, I will sit there and, and listen to other experts or, or, or non-experts who give evidence they should not be giving. And I don't quite understand the dynamics. And all this is what is informing the magistrate or the judge at the end of the day. So for me, um, I think we, we all need to understand some basic fundamental principles that will assist all of us to assist those victims and survivors who need the help they need to get justice at the end of the day. And so um, from a technical aspect, I think uh, for us to adequately manage victims, they need to have a centralized location where everyone in that location knows what they're doing, understands what to do. Um, from having a hotline, as was mentioned earlier, to having a police officer who understands what to say, what not to say, what to document, how to document it, how to manage evidence, how to ensure it gets to the a forensic lab and on time and if not how to store it how to document all this how to manage the chain of custody you have doctors who are trained in forensic medicine so they understand how to document what specimens to collect how to preserve them how to store them how to label them these different aspects can make or break a case from what i have seen um, and so I advocate for what we call a multi-agency assault management center that has everyone in one location and trained to do the job properly. The majority of the, the victims I have dealt with and a growing um, number of suspects are actually children. So I'm talking age two, three, four, 10, 11. So I'm wondering about the last angle because I mean, how sexually appealing is a 10 year old girl? Um, and it also boils back to re rehabilitation of convicts, those who have been found guilty or perpetrators of sexual violence. Uh, it has been mentioned here that people who are hurt are the ones who hurt others. It actually becomes a vicious cycle when you're having. When a child undergoes uh, traumatic events, there's something called adverse childhood experiences, which is basically categorizes the, the environments that create trauma in children that actually changes the neurodevelopmental structures in their brain, such that they are unable to have healthy relationships, and they, many of them become perpetrators of violence, the same kind of violence that they went through. And I know this because, um, Last year, I actually had, uh, by, by mid-June, by mid-June, I had seen about 10 child suspects of defilement. It was really confusing for me. I didn't even know where to start with, with a suspect, a, a nine-year-old in handcuffs. And he says, yes, I did. I defiled the three-year-old, you know. And when you dig further, it's because the brother showed them pornography, the uncle did this to them, the stepbrother defiled them. 
So we really need to work on how to stop this uh, menace from continuing to grow and grow and grow. And the other thing is that, um, um, yes, rehabilitation is crucial for those who are in prison. Prison is meant to change those in it, not just to lock them up. There needs to be more that comes out of it. Otherwise, they come out and what? They are worse than when they went in. So it becomes, again, we are just spreading more and more, you know, you're fueling an already existing fire. Then accountability is something we need to work on because we've talked about all the hiding of, of these incidents. I get numerous phone calls about physical and sexual abuse in schools, yet the schools continuously, perpetually hide these crimes. I mean, even homicide in schools is hidden. And you have to try and mobilize people to dig that up. When are we going to come to a place when, I'm not sure if it's the society, the parents, who is supposed to make enough noise to make sure that such incidents don't go hidden or unnoticed or, you know, swept under the rug. Because that's, those are serious crimes. Having a homicide in a school, someone needs to be held accountable. But constantly it's not happening unless someone really pushes. How many people can sit and push for one particular case until it's, it's, you know, it reaches the end? It becomes very difficult. And so um, I think we should, as has been said, we should all do what uh, we can in our own little ways to bring about a change in your own environment, even if it's just educating people. For example, I have an, an NGO that educates the public on medical legal matters touching on sexual violence and child abuse, and it has helped a few people. My motto is save just one, just one person. You never know what, what can come out of that. And so that's what I urge all of us, especially medical doctors, because medical doctors see all this and just it's a, I think it's scary for most professionals. They don't want to get involved or don't want to, you know. Um, I think we need to come to a place where we are calling people out on the crimes that are being committed so that we can, uh, we can have a, a, a violence-free Kenya. Thank you.